Hello, hello. Hey guys, I am coming to you live from Huron, South Dakota at the Junior High National High School Finals. National High School Finals. Junior High National Finals, that's what it is. Two weeks from now, I'll be at the high school finals. So anyway, if any of you guys are here, which I know there's a lot of hub members that are rodeo friends, family, um, look me up. I'd love to connect and touch base with you. But um, I wanted to come to you tonight before I went up to the perf to talk about being profitable. So this is something I'm constantly asked about. And Ashley and I were talking about just, uh, you know, kind of going live within the group and uh, just kind of giving you, you know, some tips. And so there's, you know, you guys, I could break this down into just a few key things, but um, I have 10, 10 tips for you. And some of them you're going to think, yeah, no kidding. I need to do that. I just, when in the world am I going to have time? But hey, Ellen, how's it going? Hey, Shannon. So uh, basically the deal is profitability is something that I look at it like losing weight or I look at it like, um, you know, getting that new job, whatever it is. If it's a goal of yours, if it's really something you want to do, you've got to spread the word, right? And you have got to talk to your key people and let them know that's what you're wanting to do. Because otherwise, to just say something like, I want to be profitable in 2019, what does that even mean? It There's not a lot of connection there. There's not a lot to keep you accountable. I, um, For those of you that are in retail boot camp um, or that are going to be going through it, you hear me talk about wiggle words a lot. And I think affordable is a wiggle word. I think profitability is a wiggle word. I think always, often, those are all wiggle words. They mean something different to you than they mean to me, right? So anyway, let me jump in here and give you 10 tips on how to become profitable in your business yet this year, okay? Uh, first and foremost, have a real hard, heart-to-heart -heart conversation with yourself, with yourself about being profitable about understanding your mission. What are you doing? What are you trying to be profitable at, right? What is the reason you're in this business? So that's tip number one. Have a real hard heart to heart with yourself and figure out why you're doing this. Because for those of you that have been in this business a little while, you know that it's the ebb and flows of things. Some days are awesome, some days not so awesome. And uh, you've got to be able to motivate yourself to keep moving forward and trudging through this and deal with the haters and deal with the people that want to steal your designs and deal with all the junk that comes along with it. So first tip number one, make sure you understand your why. Make sure you understand why you're doing this. What's going to keep you going? Hey, Shannon or Sharon, how's it going? Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you for a long time. Good to see you on here. As you can see, I got some sun. The sun finally decided to shine here and here on. So uh, I'm in my semi right now because it was too loud outside. So I was trying to come to you guys and do this video uh, there. Second tip. So you understand your why, right? You've And write it down. Make sure you own it. Next, you've got to tell your team. And who is your team? I don't just mean your employees. I mean your family, your banker, your spouse, obviously your 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 employees, things like that. But this goes back to what I said at the beginning. It's like if I said I wanted to lose weight, but I didn't tell anybody I wanted to lose weight. When I go um, after church, they say, hey, let's go for lunch. You know, we're going to go to the all you can eat pizza place. It's not really falling along with my goals, right? If you say you want to become profitable and you want to, you, yes, the term wiggle words. Oh my gosh, Erica, I think those are key, really important for you to identify some of those wiggle words in your life. But if, if I want to lose weight, and I've told myself I want to lose weight, but I haven't told anybody else, how successful do you think I'm going to be at losing weight? Not very. So make sure you understand your mission and you understand your why and everybody else does too. Because there's going to be nights that you're going to be pulling all nighters or there's going to be holidays that you're going to have to stay for. Or there's going to be events that you're going to be doing that you're going to need some pickup time at home, right? You're going to, the rest of your team's going to have to kind of pick up some slack to help you reach these goals. And if you don't have those conversations with the rest of your team, guys, they can tend to get a little out of, out of, out of shape, a little upset, a little envious or jealous or mad because they just don't understand why you're doing these things, right? But if you've identified these goals that you need and steps that you need to take to make sure that you're living that profitable life, that profitable you know, journey, then they can cheer you on along the way. 
Okay, so those are step one and two. Step three, define what success is to you. What's, again, success, a wiggle word. What success means to me might be totally different to um, to that that um, boutique that's wanting to do $3 million a year or a million dollars a month, right? Um, there's girls in the hub that are that are aiming to do $1,000 a month and that's successful to them. Amen, bring it, that's fantastic. But if you wanna be profitable, you have to know what that means. And defining your success is part of that. So you might think, well, that's not really a tip, but it totally is. Because if you don't know what your success factor is, you don't know where the bar is, what are you really reaching for, right? Okay, so that's one, two, three, right? Four, get real about profit. Get real about it. Why, if we are focusing on profit first, we're paying ourselves first. We're taking that profit first. So you cannot put profit last. So that's your step number four. When you are doing your books and you're having, you're, you're um, reconciling all your statements and you're balancing up at the end of the week of all, of, of all you've accomplished and you have that extra, that money set there, don't pay bills first. Figure out where you're gonna take your cut and guys, if it's 1%, it's 1%. Take it and be proud of it and happy about it and do something with it, right? Take that profit first. Be very, very strict about it because that you work hard. Every one of us goes to work. We put on our hours. We deal with all the junk that comes along with it. And to say, I'm going to reinvest all of this back into my business or I'm going to wait until I have $6,000 months instead of $4,000 months or I'm going to wait until I hit that $120,000 you know, quarter, whatever it is, and then I'll take a paycheck. Don't do it. Stop, 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 stop. And you guys have also heard me say, stop the insanity, which is, um, that goes back to some crazy workout lady from the 90s. But uh, stop the insanity. Don't do that. Take your profit first. Be real about profit. Make it a priority in your life and start showing yourself some profit. It's like that person that's wanting to lose weight. They get on the scale, they never see a result. They don't ever see a pound shed or any inches gone. Do they end up sticking with their diet? No, they throw the towel in, they get frustrated. They just, you know, they don't see the reason to go on with this. They wanna change something up, right? So be real about profitability and make it a priority. Make it number one, it's you. You need to put some money in your pocket. You need to be rewarding yourself because, you know, um, uh, Mike Michalowicz at, at Summit was talking about who your number one employee is. And who is your number one employee? It's the person that shows up and works their ass off and doesn't take a paycheck. That's your number one employee. The person that shows up every day when times are tough or when times are awesome and they stay late and they, they don't ever ask for anything. Well, guess what? That's you. So you're the number one employee. Reward yourself. Okay. So that is tip number four. Tip number five. Um, Customer service and sales training. Train your staff. Don't assume that they know what they're, you want them to do because if you are on this journey for profitability, it, it does not just happen. They have to sell a certain way. They have to uh, talk and communicate with your customers a certain way. They have to pack boxes a certain way. They have, to, they have to do all these things within your business a certain way along the line of your mission, a, lo- a streamlined way that reduces costs, that increases profit, that increases turn of merchandise, that all is gold, right? Because that all means more money in your bank. But you cannot assume that the 15 year old kid that you're paying $8 or $9 an hour understands that. They don't. You can't, also, you can't assume any of your employees understand that. So going back and doing some real hard training with your staff on customer service, everything from just how to answer the phone, right? Because every time they goof that up, you lose a sale. Every time they lose, they they don't address a customer properly, don't send out an order properly, don't upsell a customer properly, don't merchandise your store properly, which I'm fixing to get into in a second, it costs you sales. So again, going back to this, I wanna be more profitable, I wanna make more money, how does it happen? Well, sometimes you got to back back up and go back to the basics with things. And, you know, I, for all of you guys have hear me talk about sports analogies all the time. And I tell my girls, 
where you where the mistake ha- or where the error happened in your game in your basketball or rodeo or whatever, it didn't happen at that specific time. It happened with about two or three steps leading up to it. That's what caused the problem, right? Same way with when you miss out on sales and your staff's not treating your uh, customers like you want them. It didn't happen right then when they answered the phone. It goes back to your training. It goes back a few steps. So that was tip number five. Uh, Customer service and sales service training on shipping, receiving the entire experience. Make sure everybody's on the same page with that. That's how you win, and that's how you make more sales there. Okay, number six, merchandise to sell. This is something that um, that I, I get a little irritated with when I shop because I, I merchandising was such a huge thing to me, and I'm sure you guys walk into stores and you're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they have this here? Or why would they have all their sales stuff right at the front of the store? Or why when I go onto this person's website, does it say new arrival, but it's 75% off? And I know I saw it here three months ago when I was on this site. Those kind of things are immediate turnoffs, right? So what I want to say on on tip number seven, or I'm sorry, tip number six, is when you're merchandising, that's what you and I control. We control those things. There's a lot of things in retail we can't control. There's a lot of things that are just completely out of our hands. That's life. But the way we merchandise and lay out our store or our website, that's 100% in our control. So when we get those products and we they're not moving and we realize two weeks in that they haven't moved on the floor because they're sitting in a bad spot, that's up to us to move to be assertive and take those and put them in a better selling spot. We talk about this a lot in retail boot camp as well. Eye level is buy level. So, you know, when you're looking at where your dollars are tied up on your floor, assess it and be like, is that a good location? Does that make sense? Are my customers seeing it? Can they feel it? Does it create an urgency for them to grab it and try it on? Same way on their website. If they buy this, does it encourage them to buy that? Customers that like this, showing them what other customers, you know, like something similar or what coordinates with it. And those are all things that we can control. So I think that's my big thing on tip number six is there's a lot of things in business that are just plumb out of our control. But how we lay out our, our website and our and our store and merchandise things, that's on us, right? So again, that kind of goes back to some of the coaching because not all the time are we able to do that. So there's plenty of times that um, our, we're leaving that up to our staff. So making sure they understand that. All right, now let's get into the guts of things. Tip number seven, know your numbers. What does that mean? Don't just open up your online banking and see that you have money there and assume everything is good. No, you've got to know how to run your reports. There's key reports. We talk about this a ton in Retail Bootcamp as well as in other trainings within the hub. Know how to run your key reports. Know what kind of inventory you have, what what you're discounting, what you're bringing in, what you've recently received, right? And of course, what you've sold and who has sold it, when they sold it, what day that it was sold, who the sales staff was that sold it, all these kind of things. Your return rate, your your actually Im- your actual inventory turn rate, not return rate, but you want to look at your turn and how many times things are being returned. What cus- or what um, sales staff has the highest rate of return for their products? That's really important. So yeah, tip number seven: getting to know your numbers. That's a big one. I could have actually made an entire video about that but we go into that in retail bootcamp, so I'll leave that there. But another part of knowing your numbers, this is really important, that includes subscriptions. How many of us subscribe to something or have a renewal little program that we are in that we kind of forget about? So make sure everything we're investing our money in, we're doing it with an intent for it to help us become profitable. We're doing that, we're investing in something like your hub membership. Oh my gosh, your your hub membership should tenfold pay you back, right? In profitability within your business if you're actually utilizing it. Because there's so much gold there. And so so often, we take out these subscriptions or we, we sign up for something, and then we forget about it. Because I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll raise my hand to this too, I've done the exact same thing on a personal level. I'll be like, oh, I'd totally like to be, you know, learn a little bit about this, sign up for it. Next thing you know, I get a text message come in, a couple Facebook prompts come in from somebody, they need something, I'm jumping over there. All of a sudden, six days later, I'm like, wait, I think I signed up for something. I think I put my credit card into the computer for something. What is it? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty for it too. So do an audit of those things, right? Do an audit of those monthly subscriptions and figure out if they're working for you or if they're not. Basically, tip number eight leads into that. Reduce out all these unnecessary expenses. We have a lot of them. I know we do. Um, something that I think is really important, and I talk about it a lot in Retail Boot Camp, is open book management. And I think if you want to become profitable, really going down through your P&L and itemizing these things out, looking at where your expenses are and thinking, why are my credit card fee expenses so high? Is that right? Why is my phone bill so unbelievably high? Is that right? Could I get a better rate on that? How about my interest or my, um, how about my uh, internet? How about my interest I pay at my bank? I spent, you know, do you pay a lot of between interest at your line of credit, your credit cards, things like that? If so, how do we reduce that down? I guess my, with tip number eight, my big thing is if you don't start analyzing those and at least acknowledging where your money's going, you don't know what to, co to cut out. You don't know what to add to to help you with that end goal of being profitable. Because again, to just make some big umbrella statement that I want to be profitable, it doesn't really set you in a direction. But if you print out your balance sheet and your P&L and you go through that line by line and you're like, holy crap, look at all the money that I have spent on travel. This was me. I did this. I was like, finally one day I looked at my travel expenses and I looked at what it was costing me to go to Vegas the way I was going to Vegas as a buyer. This was, you know, back in the early 2010, maybe. I had a real come to Jesus moment with myself saying, all right, do I want to go on a vacation or am I going out for business? Because I was having a really good time and doing an awful lot of stuff out there that I didn't need to, that was cutting into my bottom line. And I was justifying it, however, I tried, but it, at the end of the day, I had to turn around and sell a hell of a lot of six packs of, you know, $10 shirts to pay for that trip. So anyway, know where your numbers are, know where you're spending your money, know what you can cut out and make sure you're making a habit of being personal with your numbers. And every time you spend a dime on something, think it through, is this really going to help me become more profitable? Is this a lazy sale, a lazy purchase? Am I making this purchase because I'm too lazy to really look any further? Here's a good example. In my store, we had this basement, beautiful, beautiful basement. It was huge, dry, you could put anything down there. That sounds awesome, right? However, the downside of that is you could put anything down there and it would get lost, right? Because it, a lot of times, when it came time to, let's just say, change light bulbs, if I couldn't quickly find them, Guess what? It's really damn easy to go buy another thing of light bulbs. When we sold the store and liquidated stuff, we found so many supplies down there that we saw. We found so many supplies down there that um, we're full of our that that that's where our that's where our numbers were. That's where our cash was. It was just sitting there. It was just sitting there, and we'd forgotten about it. So when you go through and you are wondering where your cash is and you're wanting to become more profitable, but yet it's time to go buy new light bulbs, maybe look around first and see if you have light bulbs. Um, Mike McAlwitz also talks about a, um, a friend of his that he was going to, um, he was going to his uh, shop and helping him become more profitable, right? And I think that was, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. The story is he was going and kind of job shadowing and watching and watching this guy run his business because he was very profitable. And they drove by Menards one day and he said, I need to stop there and get light bulbs. Well, he didn't. He drove by. The next day they're driving to the office and he stopped, or he's driving by the exit and he says, I need to stop there and get light bulbs. This goes on for like two or three days. Finally, Mike just says, why are you not pulling in there and getting light bulbs? And he said, I make a habit of telling myself I need something and waiting and saying, tomorrow I will buy that. Tomorrow I'll buy that. Because eventually, a lot, most of the times, it's something he realizes he doesn't really need. I talked about this in um, my last boot camp, boot camp call, um, impulse buys. That's not for, for you. So if you want to be more profitable, cut out these impulse buys we are making as buyers. Do we really need 10 different colors of tissue paper as options for our packaging. Do we really need the four by six sticker or is the three by five okay? 
right? Understand these things. Every time you spend a penny, a dime, whatever it is, make sure there's a direct reflect on how that can become more prof- help you become more profitable. Otherwise, we're no different than the mom standing in the in the checkout line with all their kids that want all these things and they just buy them just to, you know, make that situation go away. Eventually that catches up with you from a retail standpoint because all your cash is tied up into things like that and that's cut into your profitability. So, they, I think I definitely got that one. All right, um, da, 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 da. number nine, pay attention to your events because this is something that a lot of times we're quick to say we wanna host events, but I beg you to look at your events that you're hosting before you say yes to anything, figure out how you want this to directly affect your profitability. Events are fun, we hate to say no. A lot of times, you know, they're hard to track because we do them on a fly. But my tip number nine to you, and we go through this in Retail Bootcamp, is use the outline. Use some of these cheat sheets and tracking sheets. And we have some of those in the planner as well, if you were able to get a planner this round. Um, But track those events you're doing. Track those from what you're putting in as far as time, effort, money, resources, what you aim to get back out, and then do an audit of that event as well at the end. And to see, did you fall in line with where you wanted to be? Where did you fall short, right? How are you going to retarget those customers and bring them back around to help increase the sales to become more profitable? Because guys, events are somewhat like subscriptions and I've seen so many of us do it. We just do it. We say we're gonna host these events and then we kind of forget about it. And then we've lost that opportunity to build up a profit on that. So that is my tip number nine. Um, One other tip I'm going to add in here before I close, before I go into tip 10, is watch your margins, right? Watch what you're investing in. So often, you guys, I find we are cutting ourselves short by saying like, oh, it's only $5. I know I'll sell it. Well, guys, if it's $5 and you're aiming to sell it at $12, which I've seen some of you guys do, I just... I ask how many of those $12 items to make that, you know, five, six bucks are you having to sell to really help you reach the goal that you are setting as far as profitability? Price is not everything to your customers. That is huge. And I I know we talk a lot about that, but it's this assumption that everybody wants something for nothing. And it's this assumption that people won't pay more than X amount of dollars. Guys, it's not always true. Um, And think of how exhausting it is to sell $112 shirts when you could turn around and sell six moderately priced shirts, right? And think when you're tying up that that 100, those 100 customers dollars on that $12 shirt, you're reducing the opportunity for them to do something else with their money and vote for something that maybe is a little bit more Um, I'm going to say quality. It helps them stand out a little bit more. They're going to be able to wash and wear it more. Um, They're going to remember the item came from you in a positive manner versus a t-shirt that they wore once and it fell apart and they're going to remember that it came from you. So when you're looking at um, the amount of time it takes you to sell things, the amount of effort it takes you to sell things and energy, I'm asking you to really look at those brands you're ordering from, what you're marking, what you're able to get out of them as far as a markup that that helps you stay profitable. I guess where I want to go with that is just re-emphasizing the fact that price is not absolutely everything. Don't assume. Because to me, if I'm needing my, my staff to sell 100 of these $12 shirts, God, they, I got to be some amazing coach to get them motivated to keep on keeping on for twelve for a hundred of those shirt sales, right? Now, if I have something that they're really excited about and we can turn that in and be profitable with um, a more expensive item that brings me in more cash with every sale and I have to sell considerably less of them and then I can take that money and reinvent it back into something else and that, that excitement wheel keeps on turning and my profitability keeps on turning, guys, um, to me, that was a recipe for success. It, it, I, I, so I just want you to make sure you're looking at those kind of things. Um, let's see, May, Morgan said, yes, yeah, someone told me once if something 
is selling super fast. Add $5. I've done that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So we talk about this in retail bootcamp. If it's, if your inventory turn is super, super high, it's probably because your prices are too low. And guess what happens when your prices are too low? You're not making crap. You're doing all this stuff and watching it go right back out the door. You're barely making any money. So I talk a lot about the amount of energy it takes us and the amount of t time it takes us to, to make sales, right? And we want to make sure that we're winning at the end of the day on that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So tip 10 before I run off and go, uh, go back up to the rodeo is um, if you have not done so yet, invest in retail boot camp. You guys, this, we, we dabble in different trainings and things like this and in the hub, but retail boot camp is a 12 week course. You can take on your own time. You have lifetime access for, or um, access to it. We have new guests coming in all the time. You know, you name it. We bring in Pinterest experts. Mike Michalowicz has been in there. We bring in Shopify experts. We, um, we have attorneys in there. We have Sezzle and Comment Sold and a lot of different people bringing in their expertise and, and opinions and service providers and all sorts of things to help you raise the bar on your business and to become more profitable. But the key to Retail Bootcamp is going back to some of those foundation items that we talked about in the top 10 tips here at the beginning and really really diving in and, and getting that stuff built as a solid foundation in your business. Because if your foundation is rocky, the bigger you get, the worse when you fall, it's going to fall apart. And that's the last thing we want to see happen. So we want everybody to win. And the cool thing about Retail Bootcamp that I just love since you have lifetime access to it is you're in this community with women that, I mean, sometimes in the hub I know people say, I'm not sure if that person's really even in it to win it. You know, maybe they're just in here to gather information, but they're they're just kind of hobby boutique owners. Well, Retail Bootcamp is full of, I mean, get your, roll your sleeves up, get your hands dirty, dive in, build a successful business. And I absolutely love it because um, it's it's really changed a lot of boutique owners lives. I, I get great testimony daily back from boutique owners that just can't believe the difference their business has had because of the solid foundation that they are building and those things that they are concentrating on that they were kind of skipping over before and how that has changed their business. So that makes my heart full. It makes me happy. Um, Anyway, I'm happy to share all that stuff with you as well. And Ashley and I go live within the group every week and we do one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching within the VIP access part of Retail Bootcamp as well. And uh, yeah, there's just so much good stuff there. So I love it. But anyway, that is my 10 tips on how to become more profitable. Did I give you an easy pill to swallow, a little quick fix? No, I, done, I did not. And I usually don't. Um, because anything that is, you know, worth doing, you've got to put a lot of effort into it. And, uh, that's what my mom said. And I truly believe that. So, all right. Thanks girl. I'm building my foundation since summit. You bet. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, still learning stuff after three years of being here. I like it, Jessica. Thank you. All right, guys, if any of you hubbies are in South Dakota this weekend at Huron, please message me. Let me know. I would love to sit down and chit chat with you. All right, guys, later.